Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining our Facebook Live Q&A tonight. In tonight's session, we are going to focus on our integrative healthcare, soft tissue therapy and sports therapy courses. I'm now going to introduce you, introduce you to our panel for tonight. Um, we have Mike, we have Teresa, Scott and Rosemary. So I'm just going to ask each panel member to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about the courses that they offer. So, can we start with Mike, please? Sure. Hi, Jackie. Um, my name is Mike McGlynn, and I am one of the lecturers in the Integrative Healthcare Program. Um, I teach from years one to four, and um, I do a range of theory subjects and practical subjects. And I'm also one of the dissertation supervisors for our fourth year students. Um, is that okay for just now, Jackie? We'll go into more later. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's fine. Once the questions, when we get the questions come in, we'll be able to talk a lot more about your expertise, Mike, and what you do. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Um, can I pass on now to Rosemary? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jackie. Um, welcome, everyone, for joining us tonight. My name is Rosemary McCormack, and I'm Head of Curriculum and oversee uh, integrative healthcare and soft tissue therapy and sports massage. Um, been a member of staff at Murray UHI for just over 25 years and manage and lead uh, these areas as some of my areas that I lead. Uh, currently involved in the uh, year degree programme, the BSc Honours and in Integrative Healthcare. And we've also got currently run at the moment a soft tissue therapy programme year two and also a soft tissue therapy and sports mas massage programme years one and two. Going into next academic session, we'll also be offering our new access to integrative healthcare and soft tissue therapy. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, okay, Teresa. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I am Teresa Elliott. Um, I am a lecturer as well. I work across the four years of the degree, the same as Mike, a range of practical and of theory subjects. Um, I used to be a student on the programme and on the degree, and now I'm lecturing, and that's pretty much me. Okay, thank you very much. And finally, um, we have Scott. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, my name is Scott Hamilton, and I am a lecturer uh, mainly in soft tissue therapy and sports therapy. Okay, thank you. And we'll hear um, from everybody as the questions come in um, again. So um, before we start off with um, taking your questions, um, I'm going to just a quick couple of minutes to talk about UHI Murray. Um, if you don't already know, so UHI Murray is one of um, part of the University of the Highlands and Islands. Um, and although we're a university, we are still regarded as the local college and we still serve our local community in Murray. And we're very proud of that. You can study with us from entry level to HNC and honours degree as part of the university, meaning that it's easy to join us and leave at different times in your own personal journey and still gain some qualifications. We offer flexible learning, meaning you can study full time, part time or online from the comfort of your own home to fit learning around your work and life commitments. Uh, we have an expertise in a range of subjects, so if you want to find your future, we will support you to achieve your goals, whether you're leaving school, returning to education or looking for a career change. We still have places left for September start this year, 2022, in a wide range of subjects. So UHI Murray is a place where learning means more, more opportunities, more flexibility, more support and more possibilities. So we're now going to start answering your questions live tonight. All you have to do is post them in the comments section and I will pass them on to the, our panel. We also have a number of questions which were posted in earlier tonight. Um, so we'll also try and cover them as part of this Q&A session. OK, so um, I'll start with the first question that's come in um, and it is to do with soft tissue therapy. So I am applying to study soft tissue therapy. Will we be able to work on clients? And I think that question's probably come in because the last two years, obviously, as, as you'll be able to tell us that, you know, with, with the restrictions around COVID, you weren't able to work 
um, directly with clients. That has now all changed and things are getting back to normal. Am I right? So somebody wants to pick that question up. Yeah, I think that's my department. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, not only uh, will you be uh, encouraged to as part of the course. Uh, so for the likes of um, clinical sports massage, um, you're looking at at least 16 um, uh, client sessions. Uh, we also have um, a sports massage for uh, um, events and special populations, which again is to do with uh, massaging on clients. Uh, but also we have a clinical and team experience, which again is required to to um, practice your skills on on clients. So you you, you start off in a in a safe environment with each other, um, and when we we feel like you're you're ready to get out and and um, uh, practice in the the general public, then we will let you do that. Okay, um, Scott, I was going to ask you a question. Um, so you mentioned sixteen, um, sixteen practical sessions is that over a course of, of a year is it six months and how do the students do they have to find their own clients uh, so we will help with the marketing of uh, helping to, to find the clients and um, but there is an onus on the students to bring clients in as well um it's a you know, that's a one second semester unit um so that's over a course of um what from um january to uh, June. Um, okay. Yep. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Just in case anybody was wondering about, you know, so sixteen sessions, and it's you know that's quite a lot, isn't it? Really, for somebody to to do sort of. And are they like one hour sessions, or how, or does it vary depending on on what what the practice is? Uh, they're, they're generally one hour. Yes. Um, they wouldn't be expected to be massaging for that full hour um, that, that okay. hour takes in around about 15 to 20 minutes worth of paperwork uh, beforehand uh, and a okay. bit of aftercare afterwards. So in, in an hour session, you'd be expected to, to be working for maybe um, 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes at the most. Okay. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, right. Let's have a look at another question. Um, Right, this is a question about the integrative health care course. Um, what does the integrative health care course involve? What job will I be able to get at the end of studying? It's a very good question. We've actually got a whole range of uh, levels within the integrative health care program. So starting off with our access to integrative health care and sports therapy program, uh, which Rosemary mentioned earlier on all the way up to working your way through the honours degree programme up to getting an honours degree in integrated healthcare. So there's access points depending on your level of qualification and your level of experience. So if you start with the access to integrative healthcare and sports therapy course, you'll be learning about uh, different massage techniques, the um, body systems and the fundamental knowledge of anatomy and physiology that underpins what you'll, what you'll be doing. Um, you'll be learning an introduction to sports therapy and an introduction to soft tissue therapy, um, basically to give you the grounding that you need to be able to practice or move into the uh, next level where you will then gain a qualification that will allow you to get professional membership and insurance to practice as a therapist. Um, I could go into really great detail about this, but I'm going to try and keep it, <laughs> keep it a little bit light. But um, in year one of the degree program, you learn a range of different therapies. So you're looking at massage, reflexology, aromatherapy, um, taking your knowledge of anatomy and physiology deeper and learning about um, health promotion and health policy. So you're getting an understanding of how the way that people live influences their health and impacts on their health and how we can actually help to alleviate a range of different health issues that are really important across the country and across the world. I'm not going to go through every different module for the whole programme, but just to <laughs> just to know that in second year of the degree programme, it becomes a lot more flexible. You've got a lot of options of what therapies you want to study and what, uh, what you want to investigate. So you've got things like remedial massage and sports massage and injury management. You've got clinical reflexology. You've got um, what we call contemporary aromatherapy too. So it's taking it that much further and finding out different ways that you can use essential oils in your practice and different application methods and looking at the science behind um, the essential oils that you use. 
Year three then moves into um, much more advanced topics. So you're learning about a range of different things. I said, I'm not going to go into it. So I'm going to try and bring myself in. But um, it gives you develop a much deeper understanding of the therapies that you're practicing and the, the arena that we work within. Um, we want to develop critical thinkers and critical practitioners and reflective practitioners. And that's what going that much further is about. Um, the the question you, you asked about jobs that you went to? Yeah, somebody's wondering what job will I be able to get at the end of the degree? Okay. There's a whole range of different opportunities. Um, the majority of integrative healthcare practitioners tend to be self-employed and they tend to work as contractors in different arenas and that can be in hospitals, GP clinics. Um, they, most people will run their own clinics. Um, we've got people working in hospice care, um, supportive care. Um, we do have people, depending on the level of the exit at, we've got them working in spas and uh, we've also got people working in beauty salons. It depends on where you want to work and what opportunities you want to make for yourself as well. Um, Teresa, do you want to, to say anything? Yeah, about yeah, I'm just going to jump on the back of that. So every year that you study with us from uh, when you complete, as Mike said, your first year, um, you can then become self-employed. You've got the qualifications then to be able to get insurance and everything else. So actually you can become self-employed at that point. And as we go through the years and we teach you a little bit more and we take you a little bit further with the theory and we um, we look at the different health conditions that we can help with um, and we explore the options, this this widens and widens further and further. So actually, when we become in come into your third and fourth year, you actually get more of a choice at that point. Actually, where do I want to take this? And what we help you study then allows you to then go, actually, which field do I want to go into? Do I want to go into maybe working alongside, um, at, like Mike said, GP practices, or it could be working alongside other professionals, whether that is osteopaths or physiotherapists or uh, occupational therapists. There's so many different options but we can help you hone in on what is your kind of flair, what is your passion. Uh, that could be things like, it could be pain management, it could be working with uh, people with MS, it could, there's all an absolute host of different health conditions there that can be worked with as well. So um, we try and tailor it as much as possible to be, uh, to tap into what your, your energy and your passion is. Okay. Just one other wee point there that actually tailors onto that, uh, or tails into it, is that at every level, you gain and gain a qualification. So you can exit after year one of the degree with a certificate of higher education, after year two with a diploma of higher education, after year three with a bachelor of science, or after year four with a bachelor of science with honours when you do your dissertation. So at every level, there is an exit point that is a recognised qualification that you can go out and get employment or become self-employed with. Okay, great. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa and Mike. And, and that kind of really emphasises the fact that, you know, our courses are flexible and you can come in and out and depending on your life circumstances and, and, and you know, um, other commitments that you might have. So it's really a great way to start building up qualifications and skills. Um, and clearly, you both like you both love the course. And, and Teresa, I think when you were a student, you 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 really loved it. And what Teresa didn't say at the begin beginning is that she won Student of the Year um, a few years back in the College Development Network Awards, which is a national competition for the whole of Scotland. Um, and Teresa won the Student of the Year, so so that was very well done. Thanks. Um, okay, so let's have a look. What other questions have we got right this might is quite maybe quite a good follow-on but this is probably for for everybody here um because this all this is a question i think that will apply to to all the areas that we're talking about tonight um it says will part of these courses allow me to volunteer or do work placements i'll, I'll come in on that one start off on that one yeah i think it's important to highlight here that none of our programmes actually require a work placement. In the past, they did, uh, for especially, especially around the uh, sports therapy and the integrative healthcare uh, programmes uh, from HNC and uh, Certificate of Higher Education onwards. However, as we've progressed through the delivery of these programmes, we've dropped the requirement of uh, an actual placement being required. But volunteering is a really important aspect of through, of through all of this. 
and it's about volunteering, uh, so taking sports therapy or soft tissue for as, as an example. Been out there working within the industry around um, uh, sports therapy, so for example, um, uh, local uh, football uh, clubs, etc. Working alongside them, side of pitch work in a volunteer capacity is a, a really important way forward for uh, those students. And also then within the integrative healthcare as well, whether it be at a further education level or a higher education level, then undertaking of voluntary uh, provision is something that uh, we cover throughout all of our years uh, within the, the um, integrative healthcare also. Okay, thank you, Rosemary. And Sorry, Sorry can, can I just jump in there on the back of that and on the back of what Rosemary was saying? Actually, pre-COVID, um, we we were able to um, take some of the students out. So we would go out as a group, actually, and we would go into different organisations. It could have been that we were working with um, uh, other local organisations, so such as Quarriers, the Ball Group. Um, there was lots of different ones that we could do. So now that as we're coming out of COVID now, um, we're hoping to pick all that back up again as well. And it's an amazing experience. It gets you out there. It gets you trying everything out um, and, and it just gives you such a much wider range of experience. OK, great. That's super. Thanks, Teresa. Um, yeah, because I was actually going to ask, um, do you do a lot of students take up the opportunity of volunteering when they're doing their studies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got a, a wide range of students across all of those programmes that uh, uh, look to undertake uh, volunteering. Um, it's a really important aspect and it's it's well populated by our students and, and encouraged to do so. Also, with the access to integrative healthcare and soft tissue therapy, the programme that starts in next academic, se academic session, then we've got some really good strength application for that programme already. Part and parcel of their programme is quite a lot of uh, volunteering uh, throughout the academic session. Uh, so it's a requirement of the programme. They're not actually assessed on it, so it's not not that they're going to do the volunteering and be a, being assessed on it. Uh, but it's important they actually undertake the volunteering for gaining their experience, uh, sharing the knowledge that they've got, and uh, being really a, a strong advocate of what soft tissue therapy and sports therapy is. So those are two key areas within the access program. Okay, thanks. And Rosemary, can I just ask the access program? Um, what level is that and what qualification do you need to get into that one? So the access programme is SCQF level six. So it's a further education provision. So it's the one year programme before you actually then come into the higher education. So into either the HNC or the HND in sports therapy or the one, two, three or four year degree programme within integrative healthcare. So to be able to come on board that programme, uh, quite a lot of our students are mature students. So, for example, it's about it's about them coming in as a, a student with with no previous qualification and can start at that level with no uh, previous qualification at all. So that's one of the key things about all of those programmes. Um, there obviously is a, a requirement when you come into the SCQF level seven, so the the higher education either at HN or or HE, uh, but for the access programme, very much encourage any age group of students to come in. Uh, with no previous qualification to join us from from scratch. Okay, fantastic. And then they can work their way up if they choose to do so onto the, as you say, the HNC and then the the HNC and then the degree. So it's a great pathway, isn't it, for you know the, a starting point if you're interested in, in in soft tissue therapy or integrative healthcare. So thank you very much. Um, right. Okay. Let's have a look at any other questions. I've got a more generic question here. Um, which is probably quite a good follow on as well. So when we've spoken a bit about the courses, we talked about integrative healthcare, soft tissue therapy. When do the courses start um, this year in September? So the further education, so the access courses, and then the higher education being the obviously the HNC seen above. Oh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> the access course begins the week before the um, higher education courses, and it's the last week in August. So it's the week of the 29th of August is when the uh, access course starts. 
the degree programs start the week after. Um, our induction days are for the access course will be the week before that. Um, and some of our programs, so the HNC and HND soft tissue and sports therapy are the week the same week as the access inductions. And the first year of the degree is that week as well. The following subsequent years of the degree have their induction of the week that the access course starts teaching. Okay. Um, then the degree programs, all the higher education programs start the week of the 5th of September. Okay, and the, so they start the 5th of September, so the, if you were doing higher education, you start the 5th of September, and then when does the first semester finish? For the degree program, it's after 12 weeks, so it's 12 okay. weeks of contact, so it's in December that the first semester finishes. Um, okay. For the HN programs, it's January, they've got a few more weeks on there. Okay. Um, so they follow the HN um, calendar. The further education course finishes at the same time. It's after 18 weeks, isn't it? So that's the end of January as well. Um, and that's and semester two starts uh, towards the end of January. And it's two semesters, isn't it? Yes, of course. Yeah, I should say, yeah, it's yep. two semesters. Um, one at the start of the year, one at the end of the year. <laughs> Okay, oh, that's, that's great. Thank you very much. And although I know the timetables um, are not finalised, but are you able to say what the normal pattern of attendance in college is for, you know, if anybody's thinking, oh, I'd quite like to do that, but I'm not sure. And obviously anybody, you know, anybody listening can can just phone us, can arrange to come in, have a chat. Um, but the sort of pattern of attendance at college. Yeah, absolutely. I give you the actual timetable right at this point, but um, yeah. for the access course, you're going to be looking at around about three days. So it's 18 hours uh, class contact in the college. Um, for the first year of the degree program, it's going to be roughly two full days. Um, for the second year of the degree program, this is something that's a bit unique. Now, you're not required to attend every single week. We have set weeks within the semester where uh, students attend. Um, we designed it to be flexible. We want to be able to make it open for people all across the country, um, potentially even further afield, so they could still carry out the course. So you're looking at essentially having a week of uh, full of classes, or a week of three or four days full of classes, two weeks away to practice um, while you're away and do the theory work and then returning to us every third week. Um, third and fourth year of the degree programme, because we have a lot of people articulating from other colleges um, for a third year particularly, um, it's fully online. So there is no physical attendance requirement. So we can have students joining our programme for third year, regardless of where they are in the world. Um, We've again, we've made designed that to be as flexible as it possibly can be so that people can work around their work, their work commitments, their family commitments, and still be able to study full time. Um, it, it's really quite unique in a, in, a, in many ways. Um, and we're quite proud of ourselves <laughs> and, and the program that we develop. Um, have I answered that question, Jackie? I think I've maybe gone a bit too far. <laughs> No, no, yes, you have, and and, and it's it, it is really good to hear the the flexibility within the program, um, that people can can still have you know if they've got other as you say life commitments and other things, they they could, and also that to do a, a full time course doesn't mean five days a week, nine to five right. in the college as well. So I think it's important to to highlight that. Okay, no, thank you very much. Right, I'll give you a break now, Mike. Um, we have a. Question about the soft tissue therapy. So I don't know, Scott, are you able to take this one? Is could the soft tissue therapy or sports therapy courses lead me to further study or a career as a physiotherapist? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and the answer is uh, yes, in that uh, they're they're similar. Uh, but there, there's also an answer of no, which is that uh, if you want to go from our courses onto physiotherapy, you need to start at uh, first year again. Right. Okay. So let me get this right. So you you do the soft tissue therapy, but if you wanted to specialise in physiotherapy, you would start in at year one of a degree. Is that? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So so regardless of of, I mean, I'm sure there there must be some some articulation in. Uh, but certainly off of our courses, um, 
if if you want to go there, regardless of what level of of our course you're on, you'd be starting at first year again. Okay, right. Um, okay, so could what sort of jobs can people could, could people get at the end of you know if they end up doing a sort of soft tissue therapy program? Then what sort of employment do people go into? Um, so for soft tissue therapy, the the vast majority would be uh, self employed. Um, largely around uh, the area of sports massage. Uh, for, okay. for sports therapy, for the HND side of things, that could be going into sports teams. Um, it could be going into um, uh, race organisations. Um, um, uh, that could be uh, self-employed also. Um, but okay. there's a, a, bro a broader scope of employment for uh, uh, sports therapy than there would be for uh, soft tissue therapy. Soft tissue therapy sort of leads to um, uh, self-employment. Okay, okay. So that's a bit like, you know, on you sometimes see the, um, on the, the people that, a couple of people that have started up their own businesses in this area, for example, that do the sort of soft tissue therapy type, but they do a bit of sports therapy as well. But that sort of, um, you know, and a lot of, there's quite a big demand for that kind of thing just now. Um, as but well as you notice, these companies are doing really well, or they're obviously one man self employed, one man bands to see, but yeah, okay. Yeah, there, there's quite a lot of so certainly within the, the, the jogging fraternity, there's there's a, a really um, big support in there. So uh, okay. you go to, to, to park run every Saturday and pick up two or three customers. Um, okay. And there's the like of Jog Scotland, um, uh, Murray Roadrunners, and so on. There's, there's a, a lot of provision for that sort of thing, which it really lends itself to sports massage and uh, soft tissue therapy. Okay. Can, can, yeah. I, can I jump in there just for a second? Because yeah. I think it follows uh, the, the remedial massage that we offer in second year, um, as well as the, the sports massage that Scott's talking about. There's a lot more scope there as well. We've had a student that um, she went on and actually she was working with a Scottish rugby team um, and she was employed doing that, that wasn't self-employed. So there's different ways and different means to be able to take that further and become employed with it as well, um, as well as being self-employed. Yeah, okay. And I think with the growth, there's, you see a lot more people now that are going out jogging, aren't, there's a lot more runners around and it's become so popular. I think during COVID, a lot of people picked, you know, started picking up running and going out jogging. So uh, that'll expand the demand as well. So, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's worth mentioning that there are further educa uh, higher education opportunities as well. So once you complete the uh, sports therapy HMD, you could actually transition into UHI's sports therapy and rehabilitation uh, degree program. Okay. So there are pro uh, pathways for progress as well within the education sector. Right, great. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Um, and I will say this at the end, but you know, we're talking about these courses, but you'll get more information about them on, on the, the um, UHI Murray website. Um, it's at www.murray.uhi.ac.uk. Um, and you can have a look and get more information about all of the courses we're speaking about. Um, okay, so let's have a look. What else have we got coming in? Um, okay. Uh, I've got one here. What course should I do if I want to become a complementary healthcare practitioner? I'll jump in on that one. So really, that would depend on what level that you are uh, looking to come in at. So, for example, if you have no background at all, uh, but you have got the, the required higher entry uh, or mature entry, you can then come direct into year one of the, the degree programme. However, if you haven't got the higher requirements and you're a school leaver, for example, uh, then you would be able then to join the, the access programme and start at that level to then progress into year one of the actual degree. But also adding on to what Mike and Scott were saying there around in the uh, soft tissue and sports therapy, you can actually undertake year one or two years of, of that programme as well, and then also join either year two or year three of the integrated healthcare programme as well. So it gives you a real broad a breadth of experience and knowledge across all of the requirement around, for example, massage, reflexology, and everything related around complementary therapies. And it certainly is, as like Teresa says, mentions there around remedial massage. 
then it's a, it, it really allows a massive thread there. But also as well, I really would just want to add in a wee bit there about um, coming in as a complementary therapist. The programmes that we're offering here at UHI Murray or the University of the Highlands and Islands, thinking about the degree, I really would just want to add in, this is the only degree of its kind in the whole of Scotland, in fact, in the majority of the, the UK. And it's something, again, that we're really proud of. So to be able to transition uh, through complementary therapies uh, in an a integrative healthcare aspect or a sports therapy aspect, then UHI Murray is absolutely the place that, that you would come to join that programme at whatever year you would actually join, whether it be further education or directly, directly into higher education. And like I just say there just now, it is the only programme of its kind within Scotland and across the UK. Okay, great. Thank you, Rosemary. Yes, it's quite unique to us that, you know, and I think that's why we have a lot of students on the, the degree who come from all over, um, all over the country, don't we? I mean, what, who's the, what's the, if you're able to say, what's the farthest away student geographically? So, so at the moment, thinking about years three and four of the degree, for example, yeah. we're sitting around about 120 students or wow. applications that's in there. And that absolute application is from local, uh, people right through the whole of Scotland, so every every area of Scotland uh, in total, and also into to the northern part of England. So we've actually got some applications, so the rest of the UK is what we class that as. We've got some application that's come in from the Newcastle area, uh, Gateshead College, for example, and people have undertaken programmes there. And we've actually got a couple of applications that's come in from across Ireland. Uh, so uh, good, good interest and, and uptake. We've actually got a couple of applications that have come in from international students. Um, and, uh, however, those students will be on hold for an academic session and, and join us in 23-24. So a, a wide varied area uh, across all of the UK and further afield in relation to integrative healthcare. Okay, well, that's, that's amazing. It's great, isn't it? Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, so I've another sort of more generic questions come in. Um, it's really about funding. So I don't know what to do about funding my course. Is, is oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Sure no, that's fine. Um, I do answer you about your funding for the course. We've got a dedicated team at the college um, and we try for um, student funding, uh, student finance. Contact us. That's what I would say. Um, go onto the website. Um, the, there is a dedicated page for uh, questions about student funding, but also the team that are here will be able to answer any queries that you have and help you find the right method of funding for the course that you're applying for. Um, the, if you're unsure, ask. We're very friendly people. Um, uh, we as a team are fairly knowledgeable about most of the, the areas surrounding it. However, there are dedicated people who are much better than us <laughs> to answer that question. So just, just so that I can follow on from that as well, what you said there, Mike. So if you're going to join our access to integrative healthcare and soft tissue therapy, then you would be funded through a bursary. So if you was eligible for a bursary, then it would uh, be through the process, so you would apply via the college for that particular bursary. However, if you're joining the HNCD in um, soft tissue therapy or the uh, degree programme, then you would apply through SAS for that funding. Um, and you can be funded either on a full-time basis or a part-time basis for all of those programmes. But over and above that as well, for the HNC and the HND in um, sports therapy, um, once you would complete the HND in sports therapy, for example, you can then come on board then for another four years and be funded a further four years for your uh, degree programme within integrative healthcare. However, if you had an HND, then you would be joining us at year three of that degree programme. However, it does give you that opportunity that you've got the other four years funding. So I think it's important to add that in as well, that for further education, you're funded via a uh, bursary. Uh, through the college and uh, higher education through a SAS application. 
Okay, thanks, Rosemary. And SAS is Student Awards Agency for Scotland, um, who fund all the higher education, as Rosemary said. So, thank you. Um, okay, now we're we're just about ready to round up, but there's a couple of important questions come in, which I think, um, it's very it's worth exploring. So, can you explain more about the residential on the integrative healthcare degree? And the other one that's coming is, what if I don't get the results I need for a course? So, if we start with the residential. Yeah, I'll pick up a little bit about the residential. So the residential is um, a week in the first semester and a week in the second semester. Um, because you are predominantly working online uh, with our support throughout the throughout most of the, the session, um, about the middle of that session, we'll have a residential week. So at the moment, it's online. We used to do it face to face, but different things and COVID stopped that. So we do that fully online and it's quite an intensive probably about three days um, of online catch up. We have tutorials, we have uh, one to one times with your lecturers. We go through assessments, we go through topics, modules, any information that you need. And actually, it's a really good opportunity to get everybody together um, and kind of compare notes and see what's happening for everybody. It's it's re it's received really well by the students. We kind of time it so that um, they can go, yeah, okay, I've got all this information now, what do I do with it? And and, and we kind of ease all um, um, whatever's going on for them then. I think, I don't know if Mike, you would say any more about that. I think you covered pretty much everything there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an ideal time to get together. It's the time when everyone's um, got a lot of information on their like you say, what do you do with it then? That's, that's it's how do you apply that and how do you apply that to assessment? Um, we do workshops on academic writing, technical skills, little things and tips and um, hints that can help make your life easier. Um, we're here, we, this is what we do. We love our jobs and we want to support people through their courses. And um, when you're doing an online course, such as third fourth year of the degree, sometimes people feel a little bit isolated. And so that's another reason why we do these. Uh, uh, residentials uh, or virtual residentials is to get everyone together and realize they're not alone they're actually working with alongside other people and so there are real people at the end of the the computer um yeah and i think it's it encourages that um kind of um community amongst them so um at, at that point as i said earlier we're really starting to look at what can i do and what do i want to do specifically with what i'm learning that that is an ideal opportunity to buy ideas off each other or to go. This is what I'm thinking, and 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 where could I take that and to to try everything out. So it works really well. And I think Sounds also just to add into what uh, these two people have said just now around the residential for the students that would be joining us from day one, they know when the residentials are for the whole academic session. So it's not a case that they've come on board and then within a few weeks' time they're finding out when the residentials are. They will know that key information from the day they join us, uh, at the very uh, uh, beginning of the induction period. So it will be set into their diaries and they'll have well ahead of time to plan around that. And we also then encourage our years one and two to also join in within that residential virtually as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Is there, so the residential is years three and four? Is that right? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, I do have. I know we asked about the results, but quick another one's come in, which I think ties in a little bit. Is well with the funding, but um, do you need to buy a kit for any of the courses? So no, no, no kits actually required for any other provision. Uh, there certainly is um, a requirement of a purchase of a uniform and uh, the, the specific uh, footwear that you need to wear uh, for each of the years that you're involved with this. So specific uniform for the sports therapy and specific uniform for the um, uh, integrative healthcare. And that's obviously funded as well. So it further education through your bursary and then at higher education, then through your, your SAS. Um, so things like what I would say though is like, like the essential oils that's required within aromatherapy, etc. Well, then the students are encouraged to purchase some of their aromatherapy oils, uh, but it's not a, ne a necessity that's that's available for the students through the purchase of the college and uh, working within the college as well. 
Okay, great. That's fine. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, okay, so well, just before we wind up for tonight, um, what if I don't get the results I need for a course? Um, just before the panel answers that one, I'm just going to add there that we we have a, an exam drop in planned for the 10th of August, uh, the day after exam results come out, and that'll be a chance for anybody to come in. Um, if you've got the results you didn't expect or you've got results better than you expected um, to come in and talk to us um, about the course you've either applied for or if you wish to to, to apply for a course um, or if you want to discuss with anybody about maybe changing a level if you've done better than you thought or you've not done as well as you thought. Um, so we have that on the 10th of August. The details will be posted on our social media um, in due course, so keep a look out for that. Sorry, I just want to jump in with that and just to let everybody know. But yeah, so if you don't get the results you need for a course. So if, 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 if for example, you're, you're looking to come in straight from school into year one of the degree or year one of the HN provision within uh, sports therapy, uh, then um, if you haven't got the exact qualification that's required, so the one higher, for example, to come in to the year one of both of those, then you've, th th you're, that's not that you've lost an opportunity to join the area. You, you would then be able to join at the access uh, level through the SQF level six, pick up your year there and then transition into your, your years above. However, if you're coming in as a mature student and maybe you've not been in education for a number of years, well, then you've got the opportunity to be able to, to, to join directly into the HNC uh, in, in sports therapy, so the year one or into year one of the degree programme. But again, if you've maybe been out of study for, for a number of years and, and getting back into the mode of study, and it's very much a blended approach that we use within all of these programmes that we're talking about tonight, well, then sometimes then we would then direct you to come into the SEQF level six or the access programme to get back into a ken and understanding about the, the blended learning approach and, and everything that's surrounded around that. So coming in with, with no qualification or being out of education for a period of time or coming in with some qualification, there is an entry level for these specific programmes at, at all levels. Okay, thank you. And Rosemary, just bef um, blended approach is a mix of online and face to face. If anybody's Absolutely. not sure what that means, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. okay, right. So I think we'll wrap up now. Does anybody have anything they want to add before we say, before we finish up? I think I would just like to say that if if anybody has any questions or thinks I'm not sure if I would fit with this or I'm not sure if I've got or have I got enough experience or whatever else, if you I've got even an inkling or a question, please get in touch with us because there's always ways and means that we can work with anything. So yeah, get in touch and we'll work with that. Absolutely agree with that. Contact us. We are best to help you, and we look forward to seeing you in August. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much, and thanks for everybody who's um who's been listening. Um, the this um Facebook live video will be available on our Facebook um page for a while. So if you've missed bits of it or you've joined us late, you can you can listen to the whole the whole Q and A discussion. Um, some very useful information in there. Um, as I said, um, if you want to find out more about what UHI Money offers, we have a really good website, www murray.uhi.ac.uk we have our facebook page we have twitter we've got instagram linkedin and tiktok so far so we can find it all you need to know or come and see us just get in touch and we also okay, have thank our, department, our department facebook page for uh, called complementary therapies uhi so you do <laughs> so you do yes sorry mike <laughs> okay so thank you very much everybody for listening um and uh uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in August. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.